Welcome today in Jesus Christ's name. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo reaching out to you from Apostolic Faith, Nairobi, Bahati. It's wonderful, glorious to be with you. We are sharing on graduating in your work with God. First of all, we need to appreciate that majority of you, through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, have tested and confirmed beyond any shadow of doubt that the project that I submitted to you, I confirmed before you, of 10,000 sita church in Nairobi is God-ordained, revealed, and produced by God. And already we are there. We are just remaining with clearing the loan with the bank in Kenya, which amount to almost 3.1 million US dollars. That is 340 million Kenya shillings. Simple. We, I just need to pray for you. Don't worry, you may not have money. But I pray now, receive it. What we need, the 2 million, the 3 million, please do not fear. If you want to give 2 million, what do 5 million? I need, just need your faith. When I pray, go and receive it. And today, as I speak, believe you are part of that program. And urgently, as God opens, we commit that fraud, get the, uh, the swift code, get the account. And I tell you very soon, you visit Nairobi, you'll be surprised to see the great, enormous program and church premises. Now, God bless you. God keep you. Now, we are sharing on Graduate, faith that graduates. I want to speak about several areas where you graduate. One, you need to graduate from a problem that has persisted and you are used to. You see, when you are a slave of something, that thing, through pain, through fear, through confusion, it oppresses you. You try to think of how you can move from slums to own a bagaro, to own a good house in at least average status or upper status, your mind cannot comprehend that. You try to shake some foundation. You try to break some what we call status yokes. Every status has yokes. If now you are in a certain estate, of village and you try to be uh, completely different, you sense there's a reaction even by people who are used to you. People fear the reaction of demons, the reaction of status, the reaction of those people around you who don't are not ready to allow you to be different. I say you need to improve. If you read Mark chapter 9, verse 16. Mark chapter 9, verse 16. Mark chapter 9, verse 16. The Bible says, And he asked the scribes, What are you discussing with them? The one, then one from the multitude answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son, who has a mute spirit. And whenever he seizes, him, he throws him down and he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they, that they should cast him out, but they could not. But they could not. They could not. Uh, he answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I'll be with you. How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. When they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit conversed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. And he asked the father, How long has this been? This is an issue of a persistent problem 
pro a problem that appears to be a stronghold in a family. How long has this been happening to him? And he said from childhood. And often he throws, he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Look at this experience. How long has this boy been under or subjected to this kind of demonic possession since childhood? What experience? This boy often from childhood has been thrown to fire, thrown into the waters by this demon and Whenever this demon seizes this boy, he converses, falls, forms, warrows, warrows, and whatever. And, you know, this man had this experience almost weekly, on a weekly basis or daily basis. There are things you are the goal until they make you fear and agree that they are there to stay. There's a disease, there's pain, there is a kind of challenge, there is a kind of difficult, stubborn issue that you have until you are forced to accept what you originally did not intend to be in. You are forced to accept that you are not married. You are forced to accept that your children cannot go beyond this area. You are forced to accept that you never become better. Yes, today I want you to understand this. The Jesus who visited this man is alive, awake, at work, and powerful as he was. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He can speak Look at the way Jesus spoke in this situation. Yes, the Bible says, when after this man answered the question, Christ said something. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. This is a graduation whereby you are you have been subjected to fear, persistent attacks, until you are forced to believe that you will live with those attacks to the end. And when Christ comes to tell you you can be different, that one is difficult, but you need a revolution. You need to be rejuvenated when Christ when and say, Lord, although I believe in you, I need help because I have and believe in me. And when Christ saw people are coming, he said, He rebuked the spirit. He said, You deaf and damp spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Look at this form of deliverance. A demon has been cast out and another order has been used. Not only the order of getting out, but an order of never entering anymore. Never come back. Two orders. One, get out. Second order, never come back. I said to you, it's possible for God to terminate a problem in two ways and issue two orders. Poverty and and never come back. Tears and never come back. This kind of oppression and, and never come back. Christ said to this demon, get out and enter him no more. Another thing that you need to graduate in is an, an encounter, a strange encounter that requires faith. If you read Mark chapter 4, verse 34, 33, Let's say that five. Christ 
proposed to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side. But verse 7 says, a great wind storm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. And Christ was there asleep. And somebody said to Christ, teacher, you do not care that we are perishing. Look at the confession. Jesus had said, you are not perishing, you are crossing over. But circumstances are forcing you to believe something else away from what Christ had declared in the initial stages. Some people have prophecy that God spoke. You have read a word, but the storms of life want you to say something else away from the Rema word, from what God said about you, from God, what God said about the purpose of your life. I want to say this. Walk with Jesus. And Jesus will keep the original st statement. If you are crossing over, you are crossing over. You are not perishing. If you are going to have three kids, as three kids, whatever the doctor tries to say, if you are going to live in that estate and occupy something better, God said that. Jesus is there with you to keep his word. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, he watches his word to perform it. That's very important. Graduate. Get through that new encounter that want to change your prophecy. Get through that challenge that want to change the original decree of God in your life. Another thing is uh, a challenge for change. Let's go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 13. Bible talks about when Elisha was sick. And if you check your Bible, it says in verse, Elisha had become, verse 14, Elisha had become sick with illness which illness of which he would die. Just the king came and said, no, you have been our capacity. You have been our, our arrows and our table. And Elisha thought, why don't I leave this power to win battles, this power to overcome enemies? I live with this man. Because Joas was the only person available with Elisha at the point of death. And Elisha thought, I have chance. Even if I don't leave anointing, because this man is a king, I can leave behind anointing for warfare. And this man was given chance. Chance number one is prophetic chance. He said, take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it. Elisha put his hands on the king, king's hands. And he said, open the east window where Syria, the enemy of Israel, were located. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, that is the arrow of God for complete deliverance. Surely you overcome the Syrians. You win. But God wanted to test the king. Are you qualified for prophecy? You need to pass the test that make you qualified for prophecy. What did, do, what did Elisha do? He said to him, take the arrow. So he took them and he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. This one, do it independently. I'm not involved. I give you freedom. You have so many arrows. I give you freedom. Within your ability, strike, strike uh, uh, the ground. So he struck three times. When God tests your capacity for prophecy, God wants you to pass the test for prophecy that he gave. This man was given a chance to, 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 to strike the ground and he struck only three times and stopped. Elijah was watching. Well, do it. Do you know some people are good just because they are being supervised? They are being supervised. They are being pushed. They are being pushed by the program. 
sense of duty. Independently, they are very lazy. Well, some people, when they are out of, it's like school children, when during this, the active term, active time of school, they are at the school program. When they're in holiday, they oversleep, oversleep. You realize they are active in school because of the school rules and program. But when they are allowed to behave, to, to, to stay independently in holiday, to show where they have their own original initiative for being active, they don't have. This man had to prove, I, do you have an original capacity to be entrusted with a very involving prophecy? I say, let me try again. Do you have original personal capacity that you can prove, that can show that you are equipped enough, active enough to be entrusted with a powerful prophecy? Do you have that? This one was saying, also, you have all those ideas, strike the ground, your own way, with your own decision. The Bible says, this man struck only three times and he stopped. And Elisha said to him, Elisha was so angry and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you have destroyed it. But now you strike Syria only three times. And Elisha died and was buried. Elisha died with anointing for work. No one was qualified to, to take it. Please graduate. That moment that God gives you to receive impartation, pass the test of qualification for prophecy. It's one thing to receive prophecy, it's another thing to prove that you qualify. You as a person, your own person, your own mind, your own heart, your own commitment, you are qualified for prophecy. Another thing is chance for sacrifice. Look at Genesis chapter 4. God blessed Cain and Abel with career. Do you know any career or business for God's children? We are under God the test of how you appear before the altar of God with your sacrifice that emanates from your career, from your business. How do you appear before God with your harvest? How do you appear before God with fast fruit, with tithe, with, all, with offering that honors God? How do you present your life, whole life in the altar? How do you present your business when the church is putting up church altars that you glorify God? When God demanded fast fruit from Cain and Abel, if you check the Bible, the sacrifice that Abel gave had specification for fast fruit. The sacrifice that Cain gave had no specification for fast fruit. Neither did this man express a heart of worship and honor to God. Because Abel gave uh -huh, the first the first bones of his flock and slaughtered them and gave their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But God did not respect Cain and his offering. There are two things. Do you know when God respects you and your offering, you will know it. And that respect will follow you at the place of work. You will never be ordinary. You reflect the respect that you attained at the altar. Pass the test of the altar. Give an offering that you cause God to respect you and your offering. And that respect you follow him. And people who obtain this confirmation, you know it right there at the altar. That's very important. That's very important. Another test you pass, Mark 10, verse 46 to 48. Overcoming people. You need to overcome people and their thoughts. When Bartimaeus rose up and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This man was bright, beggar, sitting beside the
the road to Jericho. But the people are following Jesus thought, it's not time for beggars to speak. But this man said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. People stopped him because of status, social difference. There's a lot of problem these days when people despise others because of social status. You don't have a car. You, you don't own anything. Avoid it in your family. Let the love of Christ prevail. Avoid it in churches. Let all people be taught the truth and grow together, improve. But now, there are people who will force you to know you are from low class. Don't speak. There's no time to speak. You are a beggar. Overcome that threat, graduate. But Moses said, I know Jesus. He's not like others. He has compassion. And he has an answer for blind, blind beggar. And he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He said, stop. I'm not stopping. Until Jesus heard him and said, stop everything. Call but mass. Yes, even the rich stop now. Even the average, honorable, excellent people, whatever you are, stop moving. Let's give attention to Batmaras. Pass the test. Pass the test of the effect of suppression, discrimination, emanating from social status. People who think you are, you are poor, people who think you are not worthy, please, you don't insult them, but pass through until you get to the feet of Jesus. Jesus, you prove to men that you are not the way they see you and you use you to glorify his name and to show that his power can cause change. May God bless you. Graduate. I say graduate. I say graduate. I say graduate. Another thing is Acts chapter 4 verse 33 is when during the revival the enemy reacts and wants to stop you from revival. After Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verse 37, 38, 3,000 people got saved. When Peter prayed for the rim, and man born lame, and he walked, 2,000 got saved. Reaction was a roast from Sanhedrin. And I tell you, Peter and John were threatened until they called a meeting. Why? Instead of being stopped, raise a standard of anointing. They prayed until the Holy Ghost came again. And the place where they were shook. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit again. And they received all the boldness. Do not withdraw revival. Do not withdraw the move. Pray again for more power and boldness to proceed past the test of the ministry. Father, bless us. Anoint us. Show yourself strong for all who are watching. And now from today, I declare that they pass the test, graduate in their walk with you. In Christ we pray.